What, what? Hello, good evening. This is Brother David with a um, births and deaths special for you. Man is asking me, David, why on earth would I want to profess evidence of life, essence, incarnation? Surely it's a given that everybody on this great Britain landmass, England, is considered alive, well, carnate, corporeal. And to which I reply, you'd think that would be the prima facie evidence enough, wouldn't you? But uh, unfortunately, we are uh, we are not considered that. That is not quite true. And um, I'm going to now go through a screen share with you all to show you why that wouldn't be true. And how the uh, the United Kingdom of Great Britain, which is a, effectively a paper based trust, it's not a landmass at all and how that um, considers us, uh, considers most of us by default assumption and presumption and acts and legalese um, still born at the point of birth. Um, we're going to screen share and I'm going to get some substance of the form. All right. So this is in association with Indiglo where this video will be hosted and I will also host it on splspro.com our uh, foundation educational trust there. So bear with me while I start the screen share and uh, we will carry on without further ado. So Black's Law, fifth edition, page 701 of 15,000 or 1,525. Let me see if I can enlarge that. We're going to be looking at inclusio unus est exclusio alterius. The inclusion of one is the exclusion of another. The certain designation of one person is an absolute exclusion of all others. Bergen versus Forbes. I have got um, a little uh, search there. If I do search that on the search engine, I'll find a Lord Coke 11 chapter. Um, I don't think I've shared that, but that doesn't matter for now. If you do do an image search and you look for this Latin, all right, you will find Coke, I think it is as well, um, quoting that. We're going to go to legislation.gov.uk next. We're going to look at Births and Deaths Registration Act of 1953. Okay, what, what? Changes to legislation, Births and Deaths Registration Act 1953 is up to date with all changes known to be in force, in force, we force, eh? police force, labor force, work force, use the force wisely, my initiates of self and law. Uh, on or before the 25th of January 2021. You will note it is the 25th of January 2021 today, um, 17.56 or four minutes to six. There are changes that may be brought into force at a future date. Changes that have been made appear in the content and are ref referenced with annotations. So we're looking at Births and Deaths Registration Act of 1953. I'm going to read all of this here, but you've got part one registrations of births and the particulars to births to be registered. And uh, you may look at this uh, at your leisure. I will put all links into the video later on when it's uploaded to uh, Indiglo on Tube. This is going to be premiered uh, live tonight on the 25th of Jan. So welcome. It's a freshly cast um, presentation and I'm streaming it immediately after I've uh, after I've uh, wrapped it wind reel and play I am the host the director and now the presenter and I'm going to chat with you live in the room so if you've got any comments or you've done any research on this before I have mentioned um, inclusio unus est exclusio alterius and some of you will remember um, Justinian deception brother Romley and Rohan talking about New South um, 
yeah, Australia, is it New South Wales? I can't remember now which parts and excluding Australia, excluding inclusion and uh, the video where uh, Rohan mentioned the word fam. Um, he'd, uh, he'd dropped in there a little bit of uh, some English banter from Indy. Um, I'll leave it there. I'm not bitter. Like the Murphys, I'm not bitter, but I remember. I remember it well. A day or two after Indie Globe, this channel had uh, had brought this out about uh, births, stillbirths, um, and if you've been affected by a stillbirth, I am I am here to say sorry. I'm uh, going to say it with love and respect. I also have been uh, in a previous relationship where things haven't gone to plan, and up at the point of a scan at a hospital in Barnsley, we found out within the first trimester. There was to be no more. So I say this, you know, with love and respect, and I don't take any joy or pleasure I'm talking about births and stillbirths in the same sentence. Um, man is born, you know, and we're not here to split hairs. I'm at ease for the purposes of clarity and the avoidances of doubt. I am speaking only uh, English, Anglo. I'm not speaking legalese, English only. English looks like legalese. It spells like legalese, it writes like legalese, but it is not legalese. Neither am I um, an attributed, licensed member of the uh, Temple, Church, Sun, Masonic, uh, Registered Bar Attorney Association of Inner Circle, Inner London Courts. I am Brother David. I am here as uh, effectively the speedy Quicksilver, Mercury, Hermes, Thoth, and um, I'll leave it there, all right? I'm in a private capacity, status standing and capacity, status, private, standing, law, capacity, womb man, man of the womb. So make room, all right? I've, uh, I've covered this some years ago. We've looked at live birth certificates, certificates of live birth, even C-O-L-B, Charlie, Oscar, Lima, Bravo. And we've looked at, after that, at the hospital and the Guthrie card, um, the heel prick, and um, what's done there, you know, subsequent months later to the, uh, to the registration and what is required of the registration of uh, births act when but it's, you notice it's Births and Deaths Registration Act, all in one, okay, of 1953. Let me see if I can just, I like it like that a little bit, all right. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you what to do when I look at a document and I want to find something fast. I'll press Control and F, which brings me up a little box here above the bottom left-hand side where the Windows icon is. I'm going to put in there the word I'd like to find. See how big this document is? Look, it's got some depth to it, all right? So rather than looking at each word and sentence and paragraph, we press Control and F, the top of the page, document, PDF, and we go here. And we put in the word we'd like this to find. It's uh, it's going to be interpretation. Okay. And that's immediately highlighted at uh, section 41 of this uh, act, interpretation. And that is, if you see to the right, right at the bottom, 80, 90% all the way down through the act. So that's what Indigo children do light workers crystals rainbows in order to search hefty thousands of words hundreds of page documents instead of reading it one by one you know it speeds it up so in section 41 of the interpretation it says it says this in this act except where the context otherwise requires the following expressions have the meanings hereby respectively assigned to them that is to say, brr, uh, the 2009 Act means the Coroners and Justice Act 2009. Attending practitioner certificate has the meaning given by Section 21A of the 2009 Act. Birth includes live, live birth and stillbirth. So we'll go back to the beginning of this video. David, why on earth would man need to profess separately to the legal instrumentation that we have from the crown state that we are in fact alive and uh, children of God and um, honourable living in grace and not legal person, persona, as you put it? Well, everybody, boys and girls, according to 
the legislation.gov.uk births and deaths registration act of 1953 yes oh the highlights gone let me find 41 i'm quick don't want that quick come back to there interpretation at section 41 okay birth includes a live birth and a stillbirth let's just highlight the bit that we want and there all right let's just uh, enhance that somewhat so we can uh, we can all see it because uh, i am hard of uh, vision now there we go let's it uh, smack back in the middle of the screen so i'll let that sink in a minute all right birth includes a live birth and a stillbirth then we go back to black's law fifth edition and we go back to some latin that you know some of us are privy to you don't just find this by accident this is years of research and it didn't come from romley they took it from us it didn't come from expert in all legal matters it didn't come from uh, nottingham free thinkers or sail on and the fancy crew there it didn't come from anybody but our own discovery and research originate never imitate splspro.com indiglo hermes trismegistus thoth Mercury, Crazy Horse, Brother David, and the Fam, all right, aka Indiglo. What, what? The inclusion of one is the exclusion of another. The certain designation of one person is an absolute exclusion of all others. And just to cement that, right, we're going to go one further. I'm going to go in here. Inclusio. Let me get it right. Unis est. Unis est exclusio alterius. Let me find Koki for you as well, so you know it's no joke. Go to images. I know what I'm looking for. It should hopefully be given to me. Come on, don't fail me now. Am I using Duck Duck? I'm using Duck Duck. I'm using. Here we go. It's this one. Here we go, my son. What does that say there? There he is. The inclusion of one is the exclusion of another. The certain designation of one person is an absolute exclusion of all others. Number 11, Lord Coke, 58B. It doesn't say Lord Coke, but I know what Coke means. It doesn't mean that horrible, uh, cancerous, carcinogenic, sugar-rich uh, beverage that we all know of. So again, um, beware of legal lingo. Do not be fooled by government, not fooledbygovernment.com. Okay, so that was just an independent search there on the duck, duck, me ducks. Uh, so we're going to move on now. We're going to go to legislation.gov New Zealand Act Public 1995, just because um, I did an independent search. So here we've got New Zealand legislation. Uh, parliamentary council office document and births deaths marriages relationships registration act of 1995 and we're going to the interpretation section let's just uh, highlight the address bar there for you so you can all see where that is at new zealand and the links will be put into the description of this video i'm just going to uh, go down okay the interpretation and here we go birth includes a stillbirth but does not include a miscarriage it's a bit more specific there i'm sorry dads and mums if you've been affected by any of this uh, terrible you know negative loss of life at any point again we say it with love and respect and uh, you know we're all considered lost at sea under the sea dead and lost at sea under the cqv in legal lingo and um, we can prove that furthermore this video is not extensively here to do that today but just to add to the, um, the measure i found another site that is uh, of particular interest um right but first we've got to uh, govern governance of the covenants of you know births deaths and registration act 1953 what did i put in in the search engine of duck duck births deaths registration act uk i didn't put a year i wasn't very particular i just put what i'm looking for and i pressed enter i did a uk button only search and that's what came up first so that's why i looked where i looked okay because i'm in the uk uh, but i'm not i'm actually man david is on the landmass terra firma of the uh, republic of new britain and furthermore it would be uh, law of england and wales not the uk the uk dot uk the uk uh, the united kingdom of great britain 
we're going to get into that on the next page but that's just a trust a paper-based format okay that's like um the americas and what we're going to see and say about the americas in a minute a foreign landmass a foreign corporation the uk compared to um, great britain and compared to england and wales so we roll down and you've got the births and deaths registration act 1953 again to look at um, another link there and then you've got 1836 registration act policy navigator but that's uh, health.org uk that's not government so you wouldn't look there um, introduction to births marriages and deaths registers and that's media national archives.gov uk so you can look at that man called keith civil registration act of 1837 was intended and brought in to register all births marriages and death records in england and wales prior to that it was just on local parish record level. So before we've talked to you about how the church and the Bible, the family Bible was used to uh, record um, births, marriages and deaths. It's not just where well, it says it was just on a local parish level there. And I've clicked that by accident, the national archives.gov UK. Um, let me find that. It's, uh, let me just do that control and F find parish so that's what it was an excerpt from the um civil registration act of 1837 that's what i've just read out it was um just on a local parish record level so baptisms marriages and burials 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 were recorded in the local church and the local the family bible as well and the local church but from 1837 it was a national responsibility to record record the records with the local government office and national responsibility all right that's uh that's there where i'm reading from all right to record the records with local government official officer the registrar um, in a register that he maintained so uh that link will be given to you in the video details later um birth and our legal system this is from law teacher um dot net and um this is something i'm not going to read it all again the link will be uh, given to you later but um in the details of the video description as um, we're live now if you take a moment after this uh, premiere is finished and you look in the video description you will find all the relevant links i'm giving to you as well shout going out to the uh, the channel indiglo um supporters that have joined and uh, that are supporting me as a equivalent to a membership we don't like ships and we don't like members we say supporters and thank you to um new world order lynn brother lynn and anders gansders so far i think are the first two that i've noticed there may be more you are denoted by a color icon next to your name and you are able to use my exclusive homemade homegrown grassroots emoticons emojis that there is four of so far so uh, if you are a member which is now what i call a private supporter get using them and thank you very much back to the text in blue um, and this is entitled birth and our legal system published the 14th of august 2019 in english legal system all right by lawteacher.net legal subjectivity begins at birth if the birth is is successful it is of importance to take notice of what is required by law to acquire legal subjectivity requirements determined by common law are as follows now when we say common law we don't mean do not commit any harm injury loss and fraudulent misdealings we mean statutory legislation that is mandated after westminster by default upon your legal person that is also common law statutory arms of the law okay that's where people often get confused with what common law is it's public law all right and the public law that comes out of westminster by default and the arms of the uh, statutory you know acts and bills and so forth the common law as well so um there as follows the body of the nasaturis or fetus must be separated from the body of the mother it is not required that the umbilical cord be cut the child must let me get rid of what's going on here i've got an advert there i don't know how to get rid hopefully that'll do it yeah the child must live after being born even for a short period of time no we don't want to even for a short period of time everybody wants something don't they nothing's for free 
Um, a child that is stillborn is not regarded as a legal person. That's there, look, I'm just uh, reading. In cases of the murder of a newborn child, the child would be deemed as living, as being born alive if it had breathed. It is also not required that the child was breathing on its own, nor if the child's body was completely separated from the mother. There are authors who believe that the child must have reached a level of growth whereby it can live independently. Here we go. Last bit. The successful birth of a child does affect the legal system with reference to legal subjectivity. However, if it is evident that a child is only considered to have rights after birth, how is the fetus protected by law? The child is only right. OK, so that's interesting. All right. The child must live after being born, even for a short time. Um, um, what was it that stood out to me earlier? Just bear with me. If uh, a child that is still stillborn is not regarded as a legal person. All right. A child that is stillborn is not regarded as a legal person. Let that sink in. Let's, uh, yeah, that's why I'm showing you this page more than anything. Now I'm going to bring you to um, products, products of conception, Papa Oscar Charlie. Um, stem cell research cells and stem cells and products products are something that you buy at goods and markets all right legal definitions and terms not mine not indiglows not splspro.com but a product a child that is stillborn is not regarded as a legal person if that's the case does it have any rights does that body does it does the asset the blood the uh, the young blood whether it be still or um, born, um, you know, thriving, strong and live. Does it have any rights there? If it's not a legal person, but what is a legal person? You see, we get into this later on another video. Those that uh, are on the dot com and that are members and support this channel will be privy to extra private uh, tuition and education uh, later on. But I'm just helping you out a little bit there. All right. Chat room. I want you to talk to me now. Talk to me like Terry Tibbs would. All right. Moving on to uh, the next page that is uh, is really interesting. I'm going to do quite a lot of reading here. So if you could just bear with me whilst I sort this out and uh, we will uh, we will have some fun. Let's advertise where we are in 5D. OK, what's the actual? I don't know if you can see that in 5D.com. Now, when I was doing some searches previously, um, I haven't shared this anywhere, really. But uh, in 5D, quantum tie dye, and I'm giving them a quick advert there because uh, I'm going to read from their site. This link to this site will be put into the description as well. The zombie like lives of sheep or from birth to death. You know, I've written quite a lot. I'm somewhat of an author. And um, I'm looking for other alternative views other than my own and what we've found so far than the usual ones that speak on tube uh, content creators. And this is from May the 10th, 2018, and it's by Pao Chang. He's the contributing writer. Why sheeple are properties of the state and are in a daze. The zombie-like lives of sheeple begin on the day that they are born. Shortly after sheeple are born, their parental sheep will give them a name and register them to the state using birth certificate that's the general registry office the bondsman at the general registry office the sad thing that parental sheep will do not know is that the birth certificate is the legal document used by the state to trick them to abandon their babies or lambs allowing the government to claim their babies lambs as chattels personal properties it also allows the government to transfer their babies as chattels, personal properties. It also allows the government to transfer their babies, lambs, to the land of the dead. The legal fiction, turning their babies, lambs, into dead entities in the eyes of the law. Hence the name in all capital letters on their social security cards and driver's licenses. The name in all capital letters is the same all caps name written on gravestones. What sheeple do not know about governments is that nearly all of them have been incorporated and thereby are legal fictions. Now it goes on to talk about the United States and the United States Incorporated. OK, the US government is a foreign corporation with respect to a state of the United States of America unincorporated. And in that word unincorporated, I can see how unicorn might be made out of that. So my dyslexia makes uni 
um, which is their un in. So we have UNI, uni, and then the N corporated could be C O R core, and then the N uni core. -n. So <laughs> before we get to porated, we've got uni core, uni core, and it just needs another N on, but then you've got porated. You take the A there and you've got port. Interesting. Anyway, the brain of a dyslexic man. For evidence of this, read this article, but I'm not going to do that. We've got more than enough evidence in our Sovereign Masters Guild Key Competence Foundation and our works up to press and discoveries. Moving on. In the article, there is a sentence that says the United States government is a foreign corporation with respect to a state. Most, if not all, sheeple. Let me... Uh, make this a bit bigger so we can uh, all right then yeah so we, you can see it most if not all sheeple have been brainwashed so bad that they actually think that governments are living entities and have power over them there is no government that is living in reality because there is no living man or woman who is the government itself there are only men and women acting as agents for the government. You may have seen on the uh, recent outputs about uh, my Lord Coke finding statement there about soulless dead entities. You'll get that later if you haven't already got it. Moving on. So wake up. People wake up in the morning thinking they are awake, but they do not realize that they are actually in a daze, which etymologi etymologically means to become weary. The word weary is derived from the old English word wearig meaning tired exhausted miserable sad as for the word awake it secretly means i don't know why he's put it secretly means a night watch for the dead now let me stop there um if you ever you're on a boat or you've seen a boat or you're a boat enthusiast when it leaves that trail behind the boat everyone that trail that it leaves behind the boat is called awake as well it leaves awake in its path okay and uh, moving on again, the evidence of this can be seen when you use the art of word magic to decipher the word awake. When you move the first letter A from the word at wake, a space to the left, you get the term A and then wake. According to dictionary.com, the word wake means a watch or vigil of the body of a dead person before burial, sometimes accompanied by feasting or merrymaking. So when somebody dies, you go to a wake. Yeah, so when it comes to the rising of the day, you wake up or you are awake, awake, one word, A-W-A-K-E. Another word you need to investigate using the art of word magic in the previous paragraph is morning phonetically the word morning sounds like the word morning so ah i don't want to press that what's happened and then all right well uh there you go morning is there let me just uh regain what's happened there uh all right that was uh worked out all right so you've got m-o-r-n-i-n-g as in the word morning a-m and then you've got as in somebody's passed away and you're sad m-o-u-r-n-i-n-g so the only difference is there the inclusion of the u after the o for the secondary uh, definition of mourning it means the act of a person who mourns sorrowing or lamentation let me lament that the lament of uh, hermes and uh, boris and his lamentation last march um, lamentation all right uh, lam and tat uh, lam and at iron or the controversial manifestation of sorrow for a person's death especially by the wearing of black clothes or a black armband the hanging of flags at half mast etc what do people do at a wake they mourn the dead wearing black clothes why do people mourn the dead they mourn the dead because they are in a daze d-a-z-e and feeling weary remember the word weary is derived from the old english word wearig meaning tired exhausted miserable sad weakened 
weekend. Shh, you are weakened at the weekend. To help ease the weariness, some people give money to the family of the dead. But what they do not realize is that the so-called money that they give is called legal tender, which is a deceptive way of saying debt. Phonetically, the word debt sounds like the word dead. All debts are fictitious because they are created by banks, which are corporations, also legally known as artificial persons. Legal persons, to be fair, legal artificial persons is a corporation. Corporations are persons, they are artificial persons. In other words, all legal debts are created for the dead legal fiction. Why do you think people bury their money in the bank? Sheeple, people, sorry, they keep writing sheeple on this. I'm not going to keep saying that because it annoys me. People bury their so-called money because it's dead debt. What this article doesn't tell you is that also, when somebody is buried into the ground and um, they are uh, laid into their eternal rest, all right, the coffin is lowered into the ground and that is entered because you're going into the earth, all right, so it's lowered into the earth and they're having their eternal rest, so it is inter-rested. Now, when you have money in a bank, it collects inter-rest, does it not? I have a video on this and I will put the in the description the link to that video it's recently been done about dead debt money interest and uh, and ledgers and so forth so this is why i thought this one's uh, this uh, writing here from in5d.com is is uh, is quite good and it's it'll carry on the thread the sins of people one of the worst debts that people have is called a mortgage. What people do not know about the word mortgage is that it means, or secret, they keep putting secretly means, um, it's in France, it's a French word, mort and gauge. If you split the two words, it's not secretly means. In etymological roots at definitions, mort and gauge translates from Francais into English, and then you get the uh, death pledge, all right? So a pledge to the dead. The, to, the writers more or less bang on it. I'm not criticising them. I happen to know a bit more intricate, concise words and meanings and sources and substances than others. Others just sometimes recur, regurgitate what they've heard and they don't know how to put into uh, concise, you know, factual uh, ways and they just re recite and it sounds great so uh, I'm not having a go at this otherwise I won't be promoting the site but I'm just adding my knowledge to it and giving you further you know uh, poignant so if you're new to this then it will help you out rather than keep saying it secretly means it does kind of secretly means but it's in an etymological root reference of the language of Francais it's not secret it's secret to them if they don't know the actual facts of the matter all right so a pledge to the debt is what mortgage means to find evidence of this you need to use an etymological dictionary the art of wordplay to decipher the word mortgage when you split the word mortgage into two words it transforms into the term mort and gauge ah they've already put it i haven't read this so well done kudos keep in mind that the word mortgage is derived from two old french words which are okay which are mort and gauge in old french mort means dead and gauge means pledge the word pledge comes from old French pledgier, meaning to promise. Dictionary.com defines pledge using these exact words, a solemn promise or agreement to do or refrain from doing something. Based on the etymological definition of mort and gauge, the term mortgage, mort gauge can be translated as pledge to the dead. What? I know. Drink time. One second. Oh, I do gab on, don't I? Gotta wet the whistle. <laughs> All legal debts are for the dead, which is why the word debt can mean sin. Hence the Bible verse, Romans 6, 23, chapter and verse there, KJV. For the wages of sin is death. And uh, remember the Lord's Prayer, forgive them their sins, debts and trespasses and which version on what Bible? Yes, you know. So uh, for the wages of sin is death, sin is debt, dead, death. To find evidence that the word debt can mean sin, go to miriamwebster.com and search for the definition of debt and you should see the word sin as one of its definitions. The word sin is derived from the old English word S-Y-N-N, -N, meaning moral wrongdoing, injury, mischief, enmit, en, 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 enmity, feud, guild, crime offense against god misdeed deep down 
people feel bad for all the debt sins that they created. So many of them go to church to see if they can find God and hope that God will forgive them for their sins and debts. What the people do not know is that nearly all churches throughout the world have been incorporated and thereby they are also corporations. I would argue institutions and corporations. Remember, the church is the world's richest charity that doesn't pay any tax. To make matters worse, nearly all clergies, e.g. pastors, priests and ministers, do not know the secret knowledge of the Bible. How many clergies do you know that have the knowledge and courage to teach people that the true church or temple of God is within them? In this lifetime, I have never met one. Have you? The temple, what's at your head? Your head, you've got the temple. What shape is your head? If you're like me and you've got short hair, you can clearly see the dome. The brain is under a dome and at the sides of the dome, yes, there is the temple left and right by the sides of your eyes, your mince pies, okay? To make matters even worse, people baptize their baby or their lambs thinking that this eternal act, sorry, this external act will free their babies or their lambs from original sin. External baptism will not free their babies or lambs from original sin. How do we know this? Because if it did free them from original sin, they would be immortal and not die. To be free from original sin is to be free from death. External baptism is nothing more than dark magic spell designed to deceive parental sheeple to give up their babies, bodies and souls to the antichrist and the false gods of the false church unlike external baptism internal baptism is a holy process that occurs within the body not outside of it like the government the church is also a fictitious entity in other words it is an invisible body the evidence of this can be seen in the definition of the word parson according to the law dictionary tomlin's 1835 the word parson means one that have full possession of the rights of the pharaohial church pharaoh kyle yeah, Farrah Kyle Church. He is called Parson Persona because by his person to the church, which is an invisible body, he's represented and he is in himself a body corporate in order to protect and defend the rights of the church, which he personates by a perpetual succession. Esoterically, the word church means body body corpus body body of water body of words body you know there's a lot of bodies and uh, everybody gotta need somebody everybody gotta need somebody everybody needs somebody everybody who was that who sung that tune that was a good one weren't it shut up dj dave serious now start again rewind selector Eto <laughs> esoterically the word church means body in other words the templar the temple or the church of god is man's physical body male and female to be more specific it is the true temple church of god this is my church this is where i heal my hurt god is a dj faithless there's another shut up dj dave I'm trying to be serious now go away and be quiet shut up making excess deaths in darkness oh yes don't bless all is blessed no stress can't be serious for more than half an hour can you rewind to be more specific it is the true temple church of god and as a result of all that the external churches buildings are false churches no external church or temple built by man is more holy than the physical body of man male and female because man were created by god man was created by god man is created in god's image god granter of dominion the lord as above so below so below as above god and the spirit of god dwell in man yes uh, hence the bible verses 1 corinthians 3 16 to 17 chapter 3 verses 16 to 17 the quote in kjv doesn't say 16 11 it just says kjv 16 know ye not that ye are the temple of god and that the spirit of god dwelleth in you I've quoted some of this in the uh, in the uh, Proclamation of Sovereignty Explained Version 5 Heavyweight 2021 edition that's over 100 pages long and 58,000 words. So get ready, uh, sovereign initiates of self, supporters of IndieGlow. You will get a copy of this in advance and so will the .com. Then the uh, general public will be getting it later. We move on. 
um, verse 17, if any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy for the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. The corporate life of people nearly every morning, especially during the weekday or weekdays, millions, if not billions of people throughout the world go to work at corporations. Well, they did do. We're all on lockdown now and everybody's getting laid off and jobs and companies are folding and being bought up and liquidating, liquidating and going into administration. So uh, that used to be true, but uh, at the time of writing in 2018, but uh, as of January 2021, things are a little bit different, you know, say. So uh, corporations can be abbreviated as corpse, body corpse, body corpus, corpus juris or corpse. Army has a corpse, the army corpse, the air corpse and CO. RPS just as corpse. Phonetically, the word corpse sounds similar to the word corpse, C O R P S E, which is defined as a dead body, usually of a human being. Black's Law Dictionary, sixth edition, defined the words corporation as an artificial person or legal entity created by or under the authority of the laws of a state. An artificial person is considered dead in the eyes of the law and therefore can be defined as a corpse. Hence the word corporation, corpse, corpse. You can find the word corpse in the term marine corpse in law or military personnel are considered dead and thereby have no natural rights, which is why government superiors order them around like dogs, make them wear dog tags. Are you liking this uh, initiates? It's a good one, isn't it? Isn't it good? I haven't put this in any publications. I haven't copied and pasted it. I'm just reading it live and direct. All right, because uh, I think it needs some credit and I like it. I like it a lot. It echoes what we've said. And um, I thought they could do with some sharing. This is an unsecure website. There is a uh, exclamation mark in an orange triangle next to the padlock denoting not safe, which is why I'm taking... Um, the time to give you this and not to uh, tell you to come here and risk your security if you haven't got the correct defenses to do so. To ease the pain of working at a corporation, corpse or corpse, most people are given a break during the weekend because they are weakened. All right, weekend and weakened. Besides the weekend, weakened, people like to celebrate yearly parties so they do not have to think about their dead end jobs one of these yearly parties is commonly known as a birthday what people do not in a stand about a birthday is that a ritual for celebrating the birth of a corpse which is a dead body some of the evidence of this can be seen in certain legal definitions of the word birth an interesting fact you need to know about the word birth is that it can mean a stillbirth and now for this article, I've just covered the UK and England and Wales and Britain and the uh, and subsequent uh, this side of the pond, um, America. And we will look at you and your interpretations. Canada, we'll get Claudio, Claudio um, Silvaggio, um, brother. Yes, Fratello. How are we doing, my man? Shout going out to brother Claudio, and brother Quinn, brother Simon. Brother Kevin, those physical five that are in the uh, research team with Indiglo, we will get to Ireland, um, Republic of Ireland, Canada, America, um, Scotland, you're in with us, I'm afraid, until you get your independence. So um, Wales, um, pretty much England and Wales, you're in with us as well. Anybody else that wants to chip in and go and find what we're finding and then to come back and give me a, a heads up on splspro.com, do so. You are encouraged. Uh, we have remedy to take you into the private using um, Abrahamic law, using international human rights, using, uh, you know, Bible human rights and trust and equity, legal, lawful. We are in the private. We have the administrative remedy um, here at Indiglo and SPLSPro.com. So uh, we're moving and we're moving fast. We're not speaking fast, though. You noticed I'm uh, slowing it down. In New Zealand, the interpretation section of the Births, Deaths, Marriages and Relationships Registration Act. Let me go back to this. So where I showed you um, within the uh, ooh, let's do this uh, United Kingdom Act. Yes, what did I do? I went to legislation.gov.uk and then I simply pressed Control and F. All right, on the Births and Deaths Registration Act of 1953, and I put in in to 
pre and it highlights it straight away and it took me straight to it as i typed it all right it's as easy as that for you on your landmass to do and then you go down and you look for the word birth includes all right that's how easy it is to put these uh, internet rumors to bed to bunk or debunk them not that i'm into getting into bed with many but uh, on this occasion i think it might be a benefit to do so so in New Zealand, the interpretation section well, I've just showed you there for the UK of the births, deaths and marriages. And if I'm uh, if I'm right, I did actually go to New Zealand for you legislation. And we did actually go to interpretation for you and highlighted there for that is birth includes a stillbirth, but does not include a miscarriage. Moving on. I'm very good, aren't I? I hand it to you on a plate. All right. So. Uh, um, 1995 defines the word birth using these exact words includes a stillbirth an important word you need to investigate in the previous definition is include in law when the word include is used is in an expression or definition of a legal matter it excludes everything else that is not in that expression or definition the evidence of this can be found in the legal definition of inclusio unus est exclusio alterius, Black's Law Dictionary, 5th edition. Hello, everyone. There we go. This is Black's Law Dictionary, 5th edition. And that is what I showed you prior. Again, substance over the form. Not that we are a substance, but they give you the uh, material facts of the matter. When I make a claim, I'll give it to you all. And... Uh, and it excludes everything. So Black's Law Dictionary, 5th edition, defines inclusio unus est exclusio alterius, using these exact words. The inclusion of one is the exclusion of another. The certain designation of one person is an absolute exclusion of all others. And that was then given to you when I did that. I went to images and went bosh, um, I believe, onto you and that was then given there as well where you've got coke reference to that the word birth is often used to describe the emergence of a new entity in law nearly every entity that is birth falls under the jurisdiction of the legal system when it comes to jurisdiction the legal system only has jurisdiction over fictitious entities which are legally dead entities so like for a court example where they want representation you can represent yeah, you can represent, 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 same thing, different way of saying it. Is it re, re, look what re is, the prefix of that word, re, those that do uh, quantum grammar and um, such linguistical attributes as, you will know where I'm coming from, suffixes and prefixes and words and uh, modifiers and adjectives, pronouns, verbs. It's a whole new world when you get into it. Thank you uh, to Quinn for showing me such things and getting me into the correct sentence. Uh, not so much Win Miller, put him to one side, just the etymological linguistic styles of Oxford. All right. Not anything anybody's made up, not anything special, not a secret club and handshake and that just styles of language itself. OK, so man can't be represented because man isn't known to the crown, but the legal person from birth is and we've gone to great lengths on this video to dispel all of the myths and give you the facts. And that's why I'm doing this, because we've just brought out a lawful alternative to the birth certificate called the evidence of life, essence and incarnation. That is a homegrown grassroots remedy, an alternative, a proclamation done by man in a lawful way. Um, Article six of the uh, of the United Nations Universal Declaration of Human Rights. All humans are afforded the right to be recognized as a person uh, at, in front of the law. If you're afforded the right to be recognized as a person, initiates of self, scholars, law, indigos, lightworkers, crystals, and uh, fellow uh, giddy pants, <laughs> crazy horses, Hermes, Trismegistus, Thoth, and Mercury likes, and you can, you can decline that right to be recognized as a person in front of the law. Okay, okay, you are? Okay, we've got very, very many ways of doing that. So welcome to our world. Welcome to the administrative remedy. Welcome to the private. Welcome to my club, said the DJ. 
there's a tune there i do i do believe a little female funky house vocal welcome to my club maybe cj mackintosh back in the day i can't think now of the author but it's ringing in my head I'm not going to try and sing it because I'm not a soulful black lady. I'm an unsoulful white man. <laughs> Moving on, because of all this, living babies that are birthed and registered to the states through the birth certificate are considered dead in the eyes of the law. OK, we've proved that to you extensively here today. I do hope so. Chat room. Can I get a hell yeah? Can I get a thank you, Indy? Dave, we love you. SPLSpro.com. We're coming to see you soon. We have on the homepage, if you look in the description and the links, a free Facebook trust and group for you to frequent as well. Okay. We don't uh, just live in the private, but the security and protection of most of our work and uh, videos and announcements and whatnot are in the private. But we do, uh, we do come uh, into the public now and again. We are social butterflies, if you like, and uh, we do like to say what, what, and, um, you know, have clean hands, let everybody have a chance to say their piece, but the public comes with uh, duties, obligations, and liabilities. We recognize that, so we're very careful. You can find a link to our Facebook trust on the homepage of splspro.com. So we recognize in these times of, uh, of um, what do we call it now, furloughing the horses and uh, horseplay and um, lockdowns and administration that not everybody can, can give 12 credits donation per annum, one pound a month, 25 pence a week. And so we've created a free place for you to come and say hello. So nobody is in fact left out in the cold. If you can afford to give 12 princely credits of the fiat fiscal system, then that's great. You can come and see us in the private. Remember Pretty Patel, this is for Angle, England and Wales. She said that anybody um, that's coming over as immigration to this country landmass must be able to earn £28,000 or more, or you will be not considered um, to stay. Um, anybody that does uh, home office, Pretty Patel, this is not me, David, saying this. Anybody that does earn under twenty eight thousand pounds is considered is considered what poor is considered vulnerable is considered under the threshold is considered exactly I won't go on I'm digressing but uh, so when it comes to jurisdiction the legal system only has jurisdiction over the fictitious entities which are legal dead entities and because of this all living babies that are birthed and registered to the state through the birth so because of this all living babies that are born and then registered to the state through the birth certificate are considered dead in the eyes of the law remember boats when a boat is made what happens it is birthed where do you sleep on a boat ships have a birth do they not um, b-e-r-t-h not a b-i-r-t-h one of the major reasons that they are presumed to be dead by the state is that so is so that government has the right to administer them. Remember, the government is a fictitious entity and thereby can only administer other fictitious dead entities. To secretly tell people that they are dead in the eyes of the law, you're not dead and nobody's telling you that you're dead. You considered that, your legal person is considered that. If you volunteer the name, the date of birth or the surname, then you are volunteering and by your own volition and the uh, areas of three areas of jurisdiction that the officers and courts need for you to be uh, joined, uh, the, it's actually called joined to what goes off, then that's how it happens. You're always alive. You have a blood, heartbeat, flesh, living, breathing, breath, etc. So uh, no, I'm not saying that, and I don't expect you to believe that, but the all legal people and entities are dead in the eyes of the law. So the agents of the government indoctrinate people to celebrate their birthdays with cakes and candles. When it comes to corpses, candles are traditionally used to dispel the darkness so that the spirits of corpses can find their way home. This is one of the hidden reasons that they teach people to light candles and stick them on cakes during birthday ceremonies. Every time people light candles during their birthdays and stick them on a cake, their actions tell the dark forces, self-serving thought form entities that they consent to be participants of the birthday ceremony, which is a ritual for celebrating the birth of a corpse or dead baby. During birthday ceremonies, many people like to drink alcoholic beverages. What they do not know is that alcohol is effective for weakening the connection to the true God that dwells within the temples of their head. They did not call that area the head 
the temples for no reason besides weakening their connection to god alcohol also drains their life force energy alcohol is able to do this because it has the ability to extract the essence of an entity this is why alcohol uh, as the arabs middle east uh, types called it alcohol is an important substance for herbalists with the aid of alcohol herbalists can extract the essences of plants to make essential oils because of the extracting effect of alcohol when people drink enough of it it makes them drunk it can temporarily extract the essences of their souls which contain their life force energies this then weakens their spirits making their bodies more susceptible to being possessed by foreign spirits it's got a bit of um, an e essence here of um, Chiron last and his uh, types of thoughts and etymological references and processes and presentations that he's done. If you don't know who Chiron last is, search uh, YouTube for such a name and you will find um, I've got a lot of links to put into this video, um, but don't worry, I shall do it and you shall have it. I'm not going to read anymore because it goes on from here. All right. Why? people have been legally dead their whole lives well the people are legal and they are dead people dead entities man is not dead you are all man none of you are dead um and the channels that say um like uh just any deceptions and uh experts and all legal matters and such others that have come along and said things in the past i have a little bit of critique for them and the way that they've put stuff down but on the whole i have learned little bits from glosser expert in all legal matters and um, such other channels as but we have all of this to read oh no it's, it's nearly finished all right then so we'll carry on be rude not to why people have been legally dead their whole lives. After decades of working, partying and drinking, people's bodies cannot handle the stress anymore, causing them to die prematurely. After they die, their names are written in all capital letters on gravestones to seal the deal and let other people know that they are officially dead. That's the ledger, the ledger stone on the uh, on the uh, the gravestone. What people do not know is that shortly after their births, the government incorporated them, turning them into dead entities. No, they didn't. They didn't incorporate you. They just they taken the, the calling, the God given um, Christian name, and they've annexed it, the cognome and the agnomen of Rome, and they've um, capitalized the surname, and then they've given you an estate, and they've um, created through the surety and the uh, surety too, um, with the bankruptcy and stuff. So I'd like I like to expand on this. We have done previously, and we can do later on. So I say this loosely. Um, after your birth, the government does incorporate you um, after the age of 18. Um, you know, the certificate then is no longer protecting the child asset, little one. You are then legally liable. And so the protection turns from, you know, when you uh, at 21 get to the age of majority and you get a key, a card with a key on it. And you should then use that key to open your treasure chest and, um, you know, manage the estate effectively. But we do not. And then the key is the card with the key is thrown in the bin and um, we are forever, um, you know, annexed to the national debt. Uh, amendment 14 of the constitution that i've put up on this channel um you will see that um, that is true co-beneficiary co-trustee to the national debt and the public trust so i continue on though loosely what people do not know is that shortly after their births the government incorporates them you turning them into dead entities regarding them yeah assuming it doesn't turn anybody into anything assumes you as a dead legal entity before they even learn how to say a word it is often hard for people to see the truth that they have been incorporated and thereby um, are considered a corpse corpse spelled c-o-r P S C O R P S E S. So to make it easier for them to see the truth, let us investigate the legal document known as a writ of summons. When a court agent serves um, a writ of summons, the first question he asks them is often related to their legal name, which 99% of the time is written in all capital letters on the documents. For example, the court agent may ask the question, are you John Henry Doe? Most of us, um, and I know this has happened recently, and I've had phone calls about this by a man called uh, called uh, called uh, Dave in Chesterfield, and he told me that somebody came, knocked on the door and said, hello, are you Dave, you know, Doe? And he said, yeah, and they handed him a letter. So that's 
exactly how it happens up until you know yesterday last year um november time most if not all man's people will answer yes to the name by saying yes or responding with a similar answer and accepting the writ of a summons they basically agree to play the role of a dead character which is the legal name example john henry doe this occurs because the legal name is not living it is fictitious entity that has no life force of its own as a result of that it is as dead as a fictional character in a story book the writ of summons is used to summon the dead using people as mediums this is why a court agent has to serve them a writ of summons with their legal name on it before a judge can demand them to appear in the court to connect the dots when people accept a writ of summons whether they realize it or not they agree to raise the dead so they can play the role of a dead character in other words they agree to be zombies what do witches do when they want to communicate with dead spirits? They summon them using certain magic spells. Do you understand now why it's called a writ of summons? The people are so indoctrinated, brainwashed and ignorant to certain things and spiritually dead that they are not even aware that they have been monetarized and turned into dead entities and act as the legal surety for the, uh, for the estate and the persona legal, you know. They can be sold on the stock markets, the certificates and bonds, you know, special purpose vehicles, general purpose vehicles um, by traders, traitors of mankind. And um, they make capital gains and uh, they, uh, they, you know, each one of these legal names is on uh, different continents right now being high frequency, you know, market traded, stock traded on the markets. And um, when we talk about getting equitable relief and cashing in the certificate of birth, this is the bonded uh, paper, you know, the birth certificate. If you hold it up to the light, your legal person, you will see that it has a watermark through it. OK, and a watermark denotes what? It doesn't just denote authenticity. It denotes a charge, a current electricity charges. You get charged, you pay charges, you get legal charges, you have a bank charge, you get charged, you charge your phone, you have batteries, batteries hold a charge. Charge. batteries can be a cell you get charged by the police and the legal team you get booked in at the desk the sergeant charges you the custody suite puts you in a cell takes you to prison you get holed up in a prison you've got to pay your debts to society debts and charges and batteries and cells and you know watermarks and currencies water current bank you know river river flow cash flow and banks what controls the flow of the water of a river is a river bank okay brand branches of rivers bank branches i could go on for hours about this all right that isn't in this little bit here this is an extra bit to top it off is if is if you didn't need it um more bits for you just for it to sink in okay so to make fun of you all no i'm not the elite order and their minions have and they've uh, created a series and movies about zombies such as the walking dead well welcome to splspro.com indiglo and um, the waking of the dead and um, the uh, evidence of life essence incarnation proclamation instrumentation that is a lawful abrahamic and internationally recognized equivalent non non-certificate non-registered proclamation to put you back into the realm um, as a man a human a color man speaking non-legalese and non-legal definitions just anglo english okay and um you will you will be man with person and if anybody says you are a person ask them for the evidence that they have to claim you are a person normally it will be rubbish non-disclosed and doesn't stand and we can rescind that and reject it i think we've had a good bit of fun there i think you're all awake now and um well done to pao chang um, an esoteric knowledge in 5D and, um, uh, you know, me, Indy, and um, the man called Chiron Last. What else can I say there? We've got nothing else to show you. I've pretty much gone through everything that I need to go, and go through. Just one thing that I did notice in Black's Law, indestructible trust, I-N, I-N-C. It was just, it wasn't, as I was scrolling through Black's, that's just uh, um, not a case law. 
in these dictionaries and you can spend time anybody that's gone through dictionaries and has dictionaries it's it's you know i could be here in corporeal it, this is brilliant um just while i'm here because i've mentioned corporeal in corporeal things in the civil law things which can neither be seen nor touched such as consist in rights only such as the mind alone can perceive so when you say when you've heard me say and you're looking at corporeal that's exactly where where I'm coming from and the uh, church speaks corp corporation corpses okay incorporate incorporamus incorporated law society incorporation yeah but we're going to uh, i n d not i n c here we go i n d i though are we getting there i'm sure we are indestructible trust a trust which inter alia does not permit the invasion of principle by the trustees but which provides for income to a for life with remainder to a's son issue and for failure to a's daughter or issue application of ren 177 misc 95 29 29 ny s2d 4104 112 indian title that's it we're finished thank you for that thank you for your time and um it was fun and stop recording thank you to the chat room thank you to the supporters initiates we will see you very much soon you know where we are and um we love you lots we do this not because we have plenty of time to waste but because it needs to be done and um enough is enough much love thank you all ciao for now say goodbye to the chat room you can say type goodbye to one another goodbye to me and um we will see you soon bud and moon all right thank you much love ciao bello <laughs>